All right, so here we have our MZ65 pipe. Well, the clone, of course. What we have here is a one inch stinger. And today I'm gonna be going over a way to improve performance on this pipe without really doing a whole lot to it. So take a good look at any real OEM Japanese exhaust. What you're gonna notice, this is a 2001 CR80. This is like seven eighths diameter. I'm gonna get a measuring tape and show you guys. There you have it, seven eighths diameter. So something that's pretty convenient is one of these old handlebars are actually the same diameter. So don't consider throwing these out. Always keep your old handlebars because you never know when you're gonna need them. But anyways, this is also the exact same as that CR80. Look, seven eighths. Okay, so we're just got the muffler off here and our stock length is about eight and a half inches, give or take. So here's my opinion on this whole deal here. The stinger length doesn't matter as much in my experience as the actual outlet size. So if, cause you'll see guys, right? Including myself who will run a piece of rat radiator hose like this one here. And this adds about, you know, four to five inches as well. And that doesn't really affect performance. What does affect performance, like I said, is the differences in between these sizes. This is like the same size as a 125 pipe. That's one inch there. This is no 125 engine. This is like 66 cc's. So that's just gonna go inside there. You're probably saying to yourself, why not just slide this inside here? And well, you could do that. You would probably spend hours trying to grind this down and sand it to fit inside there. And guess what? If you don't like it, you're never getting that out again. Or if you wanna reuse it, you know, etc. If you weld it on the outside and you wanna transfer it to another pipe, you simply just cut the weld off. It's a lot easier in my experience. So. I'm going to put this at about seven inches, you know, because we're going to basically leave about an inch and a half there. That'll give us our eight and a half inches and we're going to cut it there and that'll give us some room to weld this new pipe on. But yeah, pretty simple. So a question I'm going to get is the pipe support. Now here's how it works out pretty good, right? You see, we're making this smaller. So what's that going to do? It's going to bring this up higher. This hole originally was my top hole with it moving up higher. This is gonna be my new hole. So I won't really have to make any new bracket. I should be able to just slice this off and then tack it on to my new pipe. But uh, let's cut this up. Okay, so the, the smaller piece checks out seven and a half inches. So we got it put in there. You can see that portion that I ground it down just to kind of taper it, make it go in a little bit easier. I did use a rubber mallet to get it in here, but basically when you weld it, what you want to do is you want to grind this down too so you don't have any paint on it. And then we're just going to weld over it like this. The benefits to sliding the pipe in and then welding it is you lessen the risk of burning through. Because if you like, if you imagine this, if I just put this pipe here side by side with this one, and I weld it, it could burn right through that. But where I have it overlap, it makes it not only penetrate right into the next piece, but like I said, it's a lot harder to burn through. So I'm gonna prep this, clean this up. I'm gonna go over onto my dad's side of the garage and we'll uh, lay a bead on this. Now, I don't know about you, but if you want your bicycle to go faster, <laughs> just put one of these things in it. So I know we're getting a little sidetracked here, but I also like working on things with my, my dad. So this is a 318 that's currently in the truck. We put a cam in it last year and did some uh, little bowl work and porting to the heads. You know, it works pretty good. It's a little well-performing 318. The truck has 355 gears in it, so it does get up and go pretty good, but you can always look for room and improvement when it comes to power. So basically what's done to this here is we built this engine from pretty much scratch because we basically bought it, right? and buddy said that all this work was done to it we tore it down the only things that we found that were brand new were the double roller timing chain and a new bushing <laughs> for the distributor everything else is pretty much trashed so me and dad took it apart we took the crank out 
put on. I got pictures of everything I could throw it up. We put new main bearings in it, new cam bearings. We put Speedmaster heads on it because it was actually cheaper to just buy new aluminum heads than it was to try to fix up the ones that came with it. It was pretty bad. The valve seats were all pitted up. It was terrible. It has these ARP kind of style bolts on them, which is pretty neat. It has the 202 intake valves and the 160 exhaust valves. And I'm trying to think of the other things that we did to this, but yeah, it has a Chinese dual plane intake. It's a, it's like the one where the air goes underneath and it's pretty cool. We have a new fuel pump. I mean, this pretty much has a lot of new stuff, new water pump. So it's got a whole hell of a lot of work done to it. We had a good time building it. Uh, you may have seen the video. I put all new springs in it because the Speedmaster heads came with some like, they said they're rated for 600 lift, but they were pretty weak springs. They measured in about four and a half mil thick, whereas these standard OEM springs from Mopar are five and a half mil. So they're a lot thicker. Other things that are notable, it has the exact same camshaft as this one does, the 6901 cam from a 340. This one also has the exact same camshaft. The carburetor that's going on this is a 625 Demon, which are pretty are known to be pretty reliable. I mean, there is one on this right now. You're probably not going to be able to see it on the air cleaner, but they are good carburetors. That one has that, like, uh, it's kind of like a thermal quad in a way because it has that plastic part, and it helps cool the fuel down. Combine that with this intake. This should have really low temps. I mean, the 318 was running at about 160, you know, steaming hot. So it never really did get hot. Small blocks are really known to get that hot. The big blocks, however, different story. But we're going to get back to the exhaust because I know you guys are bored. But I thought I'd show you this stuff because this is what we work on in our spare time. And, uh, yeah, you don't see a lot of Mopars around. Alright, so it's pretty self-explanatory from here. What you want to do is go and paint that weld so it doesn't rust on you and then clean the inside of the pipe. The reason you want to do this is because there's some rust in there, maybe some welding slag. It's always good to get that stuff out and you put it back on the bike and enjoy it. That's pretty much it guys. Thanks for watching.